I obviously realised that, you know, my biggest enemy sometimes was still me and particularly being such a perfectionist. And so I think that was a big turning point for recognising my own sort of, yeah, inner strength and going, you know, this is part of, a wonderful part of who you are and nothing that can ever limit you to do what you want to do. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I, w I would have that mental strength, you know, if I, if I hadn't been born with cerebral palsy or, or that hadn't happened. But in a lot of ways, I do think that, you know, having that and having those extra sort of physical challenges and realising that, you know, I just had to do things a bit differently, um, that I could still do them, but, you know, I was going to have to find my own way to do them or adapt things, uh, has made me who I am and has been a big part of that mental strength that I've had as well. I think my parents had a lot to do with it. Uh, they've been incredible sort of role models for me. Uh, and it was always very much, you know, supporting me but letting me do things independently. So mum said, you know, one of the hardest things that she ever had to do when I was a little kid was I'd always wanted to swing on the, the monkey bars. Um, but you know, there was a big concern about sort of core strength and arm strength to actually do that, let alone the motion of actually swinging from one bar to another. Uh, and she said one of the hardest things was being there, but having to watch me fall off the monkey bars, lift myself up and try again, uh, and fall about four times before I actually managed to make it from one side to the other. And I suppose that's just one example of where it was like she was always there, but she let me realise that it was okay to fall over and it was okay to get a bit scraped up. And she let me in myself go, no, I want to climb these monkey bars and I'm going to do it myself. I still wasn't sure that I was at the level that I needed to be at um, to make the team. And then we had the national um, qualifiers, which was in Perth, which is actually where I'm originally from. And so we went to Perth and I actually got to catch up with uh, one of the nurses who had looked after me in the neonatal ICU unit uh, and one of the doctors as well. And then I had, you know, my grandfather and extended family who were all still living in Perth coming out to watch me at the track and the nurse came out to watch me. And I managed to, you know, run a time that was an A qualifier, so it qualified me to then get into the World Championships. And I think for me, that was just such a culmination of so many things and of realising how much I had kind of gone through and, you know, how much I had, had to be a bit of a fighter to get to where I was and to be able to then perform in that way in front of so many people that mattered so much to me. Uh, was just incredibly meaningful and I think certainly in terms of my self-confidence then and going forward that was really a moment that I went okay you have achieved a lot and you can do this and it is possible and made me really really excited about the next few years to come so I think that was probably the biggest kind of breakthrough that I've had in my uh, in my sporting career and then certainly um, going to Cambodia and, and learning more about myself but then also meeting all these incredible Cambodian people just doing amazing things uh, was a real breakthrough for me in terms of then thinking you know just because I've got cerebral palsy doesn't mean I can't have a medical career uh, and that was the biggest turning point for me to go okay I'm not going to let that stop me or I'm not going to let that doubt myself uh, and so one, I pursued that medical career, but again, I think for me it was going, oh, you know, I think of myself as most quite self-confident most of the time, or, you know, as cerebral palsy, just something that is part of who I am, but doesn't ever define or limit me. And it was again a realisation that actually I had been letting it, just through my own mental kind of thing, letting it limit myself a little bit. Uh, and yeah, I think for me, I, I then found that inner strength to recognise that and go, no, that's, that's not okay, you can do whatever you want to do. So, um, no longer the elite athlete, but still someone that's really strong and fit and healthy. And I think that's really, really important to, especially feeling good within yourself after sport is gone, when it's been that such a big part of your life, and to help you actually 
recenter and focus on new goals. The biggest sort of thing for me next um, is to uh, get into medicine, be a medical student for the next four years and hopefully ultimately to be um, an infectious disease physician is the plan at the moment. We will see where life takes me, um, but that's my next big goal in life.